you guys want to come to Alaska to hunt elk? I'm not sure that we know. I think we've been asking ourselves that question for the last six months. Well, looks like you're going to have about ten days to figure that out, I guess. Do you guys fly many hunters out that are successful on this hunt? No, not at all. Most of spend a couple days out there and then radio for us to come and pick them up, but it's definitely not an easy hunt. You guys are lucky that you have this weather, though. Getting two straight days of sunshine is pretty rare out here. You better take advantage of that. This is uh, turning out already, I think, to be our greatest hunting adventure yet. Yeah. And by greatest hunting adventure, I don't mean best elk hunting, but we're, uh, we're here on an island by ourselves for the foreseeable future. And the foreseeable future has a lot of rain. Yes, it does. Yeah. It's nice, though, because the first day here, it's nice and sunny, and we actually get to see it before... All the clouds in. come in and <laughs> soak the place up. So we've got uh, about 90 pounds of gear each, and I think the consensus is we're going to make two trips. So we're going to the top of the mountain. That's where we're going to set up camp, and that'll be base camp for the duration while we're here. And uh, I think 45 pounds in this kind of terrain is a little more manageable it still won't be easy but no. i don't think we could i mean we could do it 90 pounds but it wouldn't be fun and it'd take us a couple days of laying in the tent to recover so. right out of the gate on the 2021 season with 90 pounds might be a little much for <laughs> for me anyway <laughs> donnie's just uh coming off of his isolation from covid yep. and uh he has no effects, so we'll see when we start climbing the mountain here. Yep. But uh, yeah, today is the day before opening day. Season opens tomorrow, and we are going to hopefully have camp set up on top of the mountain by tonight. And we did see some elk on the flight in, which is always a good sign. Yep. One, one herd of elk. So we've got a starting point, and uh, we'll see where this week takes us. Well, we are loaded up. I have a dad joke? 
We gotta kick oh. this off the right way. I thought oh. the plane pilot was gonna give us one there for a minute, but his was an inappropriate joke. Yeah, so it was definitely. <laughs> we won't share that one. No. Oh yeah, I don't think it went up on the way. People are gonna uh, quit watching this if you don't have regular dad jokes. Oh. You've seen the threats. We are loaded, heading up. Uh, oh, it looks like you've got a pretty good load too. I say John and I loaded up the packs. Uh, figured the first trip would be good to go in heavy, but I think Donnie followed our lead there. Make the second trip a little bit easier. Hopefully. A little bit. If we make it up this first trip. <laughs> We should have taken the light load first because we have no idea how we're going to navigate this to get up there. There's rock bluffs and brush fields and rainforests and everything Mud. we came to Alaska to experience. We haven't put the crampons on yet, so. No. We'll wait. I don't like to put it in four-wheel drive right from the get-go. Because then if you get stuck, you're stuck, so. A little bit of snow up there behind us still. And some patches so so here we go yep. We have made it to campsite with trip number one. Donnie is so thrilled we get to go back down and come back up again. Uh, wasn't as bad as I thought, but it wasn't good either. Yeah. Uh, we've got water right here at this little lake. This is the flattest and driest spots we've found, I think, so we'll make it work. She can get flooded out when the rains come. I want to build a little trench around the tents. <laughs> <laughs> ah, food. Water. Mosquitoes haven't been bad. That's really nice. <laughs> I 
Need you a blaze shot, Donnie? That'll get you back up the mountain. set up and hopefully rainproofed. We're uh, expecting quite a bit of rain over the next 10 days. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice, but after tomorrow it starts raining. But we uh, found a couple flat spots, which is exciting because there's not very many flat spots. We didn't find a dry spot, so we're gonna be laying in water for 10 days. But the really good news is we walked up on the ridge and let out two bugles. And just as we were turning to leave, a bull answered about 600 yards away. So it's game on tomorrow morning. We've got a bugling bull in Alaska, all primed and ready for us. Donnie's candy bag. <laughs> yeah, can we carry it? Said I ate most of it last year anyway. We made it to the bottom. Now we gotta climb back up that. Again. Second time. We're hoping we make it back to the top by dark. It'll be close. Well, I think it's time to hit the sack for the night. It's been a long day, a lot of flying, a lot of hiking, but we're here and we've heard two different bulls bugle now. So our anticipation is high for opening day tomorrow. I think we're going to sleep really good tonight, unless the elk bugle and keep us awake. But we uh, burned some calories today. Definitely wore out, but ready to go tomorrow. Everything is wet. Everything. Just the most beautiful day you could imagine. Blue skies, perfect temperatures, but everything is wet. We're up here at 3,000 feet in elevation, and there's still just, it's a bog inside of the tent is just wet already. Boots and pants are wet. And it hasn't even started raining yet. <laughs> uh, it'll be the name of this this game, I think, this week. A lot of moisture. But we're just going to kill two elk tomorrow on opening day and spend a couple days packing them out. And then... Uh, Go sit under a tarp for the next eight days. <laughs> ah, opening day tomorrow. I wait all year for it. It's here. It is here.
around a lot or they go quiet in the morning. Big one bugling over there last night. Another one over there in the afternoon. We're gonna go find them. There are two of them standing. Yeah. Oh, there's a ball. To the left. Oh, yeah. He's coming this way. Call him. He probably heard me bugle. Our 
first bowl. He's a long ways away. I think that you have to get an airplane to charter a flight over there. I mean, to be fair, when you say a long ways away, it's just a matter of perspective. Yeah. Just, just give me the word. I will go back to camp. Where's the elk? Yeah, there. If you can see those two patches of snow, that's about halfway. They're in the next ridge over. Good news is we could see antlers on the one from here, so he's got to be big. Bad news is we could see antlers on the one from here, so he's probably big. <laughs> oh, it's sunny though. It is beautiful. That's why we've got to do it today. We can spend the next nine days figuring out how to get it out of here. We, uh, I don't even know what time it is. We've been hiking, it seems like, for quite a while. It's just so slow going. Everything's wet and slippery. There's all these little depressions and grooves. You look out 300 yards, and like, oh, there's 300 yards to that next ridge. And 45 minutes later, you get there and turn around and look back. You're like, yeah, it's 300 yards as a bird flies. But unfortunately, we don't fly like a bird flies. We walk like a sloth walks. about the entire morning to get to this point. I don't know what time it is, but it's lunchtime. I know that. My stomach's a little hungry. We started on the back side of that mountain over there. Around it and down the draw, we've come this far. And you just can't even, can't see every little dip and bluff and gully and cliff. We're six hours into this hike. We haven't even got to the ridge where we can see the elk yet, so. We're gonna keep going up here. We're almost there. It's a lot easier going here. We're gonna go up and peek over the top and see if we can find an elk. Put an arrow in an elk.
no way we can move any closer from right here. We might be able to get up a little bit, but we're going to be way too exposed out in the open. So. Not sure what we're going to do. seven hours to get here. If you do the math, that means if we left right now and hiked straight over, it would be 8.30 tonight when we got back to camp. But we're not just heading back. We spotted these elk. He's bugled a couple times, the bull has, so we're going to see if we can work in at least half the distance before we start calling.
awesome. First call in in Alaska. Just so open. And the wind was kind of going that way. It had been coming up really good about the time we got in vehicle and it started going that way. So. cows up there. Once they get out of sight, we can drop down. We should be able to go right around there and make another play on him. He said he agreed with that plan.
to ignore again. We had to come to Alaska to kill a Roosevelt. Opening day. Excitement went away quickly. Well, not quickly. Prolonged over the last five hours. I've never had to work so hard to get an elk cut up. <laughs> but we got it. it. Took us seven hours to get here. It's a little after nine, I think. Obviously dark. I think we might uh, see if we can get up here out of the wind. Maybe see if we can sleep on the mountain. I don't think there's any way we can safely make it back. Seven hours, that was in the daylight. So we'll see. We probably won't be able to sleep at all. The cold didn't bring any anything. You even have anything to start fire with? I have my fire starter and lighter. Cool. <laughs> it's a little drier on this side of the mountain, so maybe we can find some something dry to start a fire. It's gonna be brutal. Next couple days at least you're gonna be spent packing. I've never seen quarters so big, I've never seen back straps so big, neck meat so big, it just Roosevelt elk are big. These are Roosevelt elk on steroids. But we got it done. Opening day. Certainly not complaining. Just, just admitting it's going to be brutal. Yes, it is.
slept on the side of the mountain last night after getting my elk cut up. And it got cold. Wind and rain got wet. Coupled with the wind, definitely the closest I've ever been to hypothermia. Just couldn't get warm, but I took off at a pretty good pace here. Got the heart rate up, got the blood warmed up a little bit. Think we're okay now. Donnie and John are a ways behind me. I told them I was gonna just take off, and wait for them when I warmed up. We, uh, we aren't sure what we're gonna do about packing the elk yet. We're gonna get back to camp, warm up, dry off, be much more prepared, and make a game plan. Meat's all in game bags, it's all cooled down. Should be just fine, but either way we go, we're gonna have multiple trips of the heaviest game bags I've ever loaded. not quite as fun as yesterday. We ended up sleeping on the mountain last night. Well, we ended up staying on the mountain last night. I didn't sleep at all. I don't think any of us did. It got pretty cold. We were managing okay until it started raining. And the rain and the wind and the cold weren't a good combination. So I was nearly hypothermic this morning threw my pack on and took off running up the hill and expected to be a mile or two ahead of John and Donnie and look, they were right behind me. I think they were in the same condition. Donnie slipped back trail a little bit, and tweaked his knee pretty good and can barely walk. I don't think he's doing it just to get out of packing. But if he did, I wouldn't blame him. It's nasty. Trail's just like slime soaked to the bone, have no food. Donnie loaned me his raincoat, let John sleep in his rain pants last night. Donnie has enough food to share with us for one last bite here before we head up the mountain. We're, we're not even halfway. Day two is uh, one that we'll remember, but we'd like to forget. We are back at camp, as evidenced by the warmth that maybe you can't feel, but maybe you can sense us feeling. I am chilled to the bone and wore out. I don't know how we're going to get that elk out. And I know how we're going to get it out, I just don't know how we're gonna get it out. It's a long ways, it's heavy loads, it's steep, it's wet, it's everything you can imagine that sucks about packing elk. But we killed an elk yesterday, so. It's all good, we're gonna definitely rest. I didn't sleep, John didn't sleep. I don't think Donnie slept much last night. And then a brutal hike after a long day yesterday, so I think we're going to recover here for the day, dry out, come up with a game plan to pack meat. It's cold out, it's plenty, plenty cool. 
That's all I know. Not feeling the best. Just keep having chills and fever. Extremely achy. I'm not sure what's going on. And I'm not sure how I'm going to go forward. Well, it's day three, uh, I think, Friday, yeah. John and I were getting ready to pack up and head over and start packing meat. Donnie hurt his knee yesterday, so he's uh, gonna need to rest it up. And we just got ready to leave, and Donnie's in his tent with chills and sweats and a fever, so we're just kinda chilling here, hoping that passes and uh, not anything major. We can get over and start packing the elk. All right, we've got a game plan. I'm gonna head over to about the halfway point, set up a spike camp. John's gonna be a couple minutes behind me. Donnie's gonna stay here and get feeling better. It's uh, supposed to just dump rain all day today, tomorrow, uh, but we've gotta get the, the meat packed out. So I'm gonna go over and get a spike camp set up, try to shuttle the meat to the spike camp today, and then tomorrow make the descent down the mountain uh, with the loads. I'm guessing it's gonna be three trips each minimum uh, across the flat to camp and then up and down the mountain. So got our work cut out for us, but uh, that's what we came here to do and we knew it was gonna be wet, and windy and rainy and it absolutely sucks, but uh, it makes us tougher. So we'll uh, check back in here in a bit. left to head out to try and pack up the bull. We're going to be gone for two days or so. I'm just really weak. I have fever. I'm just sweating. Confusedly, I got the chills. I don't know what's going on with my body. But I'm not strong enough to make it over there. I'm just staying here, waiting for them to get back. Hopefully, they don't run into any issues. On their track, it's raining profusely. It's supposed to be a half an inch of rain every hour, every two hours. And I've got all the provisions here that I need. Just need to keep the mind right. And uh, wait it out as best I can. I'm really letting those guys down right now. Have them back out of the bowl by themselves. And I know that I'm not going to be able to make it over there. 
let alone up and down the mountain a couple of times packing meat. So, I'll check back in here in a few hours or so. Well, we were hoping the rain would quit, but no such luck. So we're heading in, we got tent set up. Where'd you set your tent? Back over the hill? Yeah. John doesn't like, he's an anti-social camera guy. He's about 120 yards away from me, but we're hiking in. Uh, get the first load of elk meat. And it's going to be brutal from start to finish. But, here we go. You must be having fun. I've heard it said that to those who feel life is a tragedy and to those who think a comedy, I'm laughing. <laughs> Our fear, one of our fears, came partly true. We came up here and there's an, a bear on the meat. Fortunately, he didn't want the meat as badly as he wanted to live, so he ran away. But we, uh, looks like we lost two game bags. We've got one, two, three, four, five that are still good here, so. It's a risk, I guess, here in wide open country, there's nowhere to hang it. We put it up on rocks and let it cool here, but that's what we got.
just got a message from John and Corey that they had packed out the first load of meat and they packed it out to the spike camp. It's going to be a long cold night. My chills are subsiding for a little bit anyway. They come about every 20 to 30 minutes. As soon as I get out of the bag, I just freezing cold and start sweating. But it's a good time to sit and think of some jokes. So I buy my wife cheesy gifts all the time and she said if I bought her one more cheesy gift, she was going to burn it. So I bought her a candle. I wouldn't want to do this in the sun anyways, it'd probably be hot. <laughs> that is one thing. Rain keeps us cool, wicks the sweat away. I said yesterday that to those who feel life is a tragedy and to those who think a comedy. I just went from comedy to tragedy. We've dropped halfway down the cliff here and we are clipped out. So now with our 75 pounds of meat on our backs, we turn around and go straight back up. I can find a reason to laugh there. In the next couple hours as we're hiking up to think about it, I'll let you know. Well, we made it down to the lake, finally. And we got the first load of meat dropped off, and now we're heading back up the mountain to hopefully be able to get the next load of meat packed back to our spike camp.
We made it back to our staging spot. We got camp set up around the corner from here and we're gonna stay here for the night and uh, get up in the morning and shuttle the rest of it down to the pickup point. So that's the plan. Donnie's still back at camp at the base camp and John and I have some of our gear still there. Depending on how the packing goes tomorrow, we, uh, we'll see how Donnie's feeling, but he's not been doing too good. Not sure if he got some bad water or if he's got some kind of bug or what's going on, but he's been in the tent for three straight days and hasn't come out, so we'll uh, hope he's better tomorrow. Well, we made it. It wasn't pretty, and it wasn't fun, but we made it. We only had a couple of big slides down the mountain where we thought we might not stop, but we got stopped every time, and we're here. So, got the meat all hanging, and now we're heading back up the mountain to where our camp is. We'll spend the night there, and then we're gonna go all the way around the mountain, and camp is, base camp's just right there in that little saddle. That's where Donnie is, so we're going to pack back there in the morning, get camp taken down, and pack down to that side of the lake, and wait for a plane. Tonight's the first time there's been any break in the weather, enough to even see the lake to be able to land a plane, so hopefully they can get in tomorrow and get us and the meat. That's the update. That's the plan. Well, we made it back to camp. It's uh, 9.30 or so. We looked at our tracks and we've done, in the last 48 hours, we've done 22 miles. Almost all of it with packs full, shuttle and elk meat, shuttle and camp. And uh, we're still here on the side of the mountain. We're going to pack up in the morning and head back over to where Donnie's camped at and pick up camp there and head out down to the lake and hope that a float plane can land for the last at least three days. There's no way they could fly at all. It's just been foggy and rainy. Tonight's the first night that don't hear any rain on the tent, so it's uh, good. Well, this may be our last day in the Alaska wilderness. And if all goes well, and this fog layer lifts at some point, they might be able to fly in and pick us up. So we are picked up camp, camp number, whatever it is, heading back to base camp one to find Donnie and uh, get him loaded up and head down to the lake and wait there till we can get picked up. So hopefully it's today, if not, we'll hang out on the lake and uh, wait for the plane, but been an incredible uh, journey, incredible adventure. Uh, the hunting was easy. It was everything else that went with it that was an incredible challenge. So it, uh, everything from weather to everything being wet to terrain to just everything about it was, uh, was epic. Probably won't ever do it again, but we can say we did it once and uh, did it successfully. So that was awesome. Corey and John messaged about an hour ago and said, uh, 
they're packing up their spike camp and headed my way. It'll take them about three hours to get over here. Told me to get mine down and my home for the last four days is uh, packed up in the EXO. We're going to make one trip to the bottom, dump, come back up and get the remaining gear that we have and make the final trip down and hopefully this weather, it's not raining right now, it's a little foggy, but hopefully it's clear enough for the uh, plane to be able to come in and land on the lake. Hey. There's a familiar face. How are you? Pooped? Yeah. I've had more energy at different times in my life. I might have had less at some point, I don't know. How you doing? Alright. Better? Ish? Ish. What are you thinking? Yeah. Head out? Yeah, I don't. Just walking up that, I got everything but my bow loaded. I think I can make it down with that. So everything's underneath there, just what you left and what John left. I think you can beast it in one trip. I don't know, I gotta see what all's in there. There's still a lot, you have a big bag. Yeah, I got a big bag. And... I just don't know if I can make it back up this mountain. We are scrambling because we can get a flight in an hour. Otherwise, it's going to be three days. And we want a flight. We've got an hour and a half hike to the lake. And that's doing it in one trip. It took us two trips to get everything up here. We're going down one trip. And then we're having a bacon cheeseburger. We just sprinted down the mountain because we heard the plane land and we thought we'd missed and we hope we haven't. We hope. <laughs> but we made it down off this mountain in about 38 minutes. It usually takes a little over an hour. And our packs were way too heavy to be going that fast. Fossil bones that were found in interior Alaska indicate that a subspecies of elk once existed here during the Ice Age, but the elk that are here now were introduced from the Pacific Northwest during the last century. The first successful translocation involved eight Roosevelt elk calves that were captured on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington in 1928 and moved to Alaska the next year. Another successful transplant occurred in 1987 when 33 Roosevelt elk and 17 Rocky Mountain elk were captured in Oregon and moved to southeast Alaska. These elk have dispersed and established breeding populations on several islands, although it hasn't been without challenge. An estimated two-thirds of the 50 elk that were transplanted in 1987 died from predation, starvation, and accidents within 18 months of being released. Additionally, Liberal hunting opportunities, harsh winters, and overpredation took its toll on the elk populations during the 1960s and 1970s. All hunts for elk in Alaska are now regulated by limited permit, and success rates on these hunts are generally very low. Steep terrain, thick timber, and harsh weather make Alaska elk a difficult and challenging pursuit. Add in the challenge of packing these giant bodied elk from remote kill sites, along with the presence of brown bears and wolves, and hunting elk in Alaska is not for the faint of heart. 
Depending on the season, the weather, and several other factors, harvest as low as a single elk out of over 150 tags has been recorded, and the average success on some of these Alaska elk hunts is between 1 and 2 percent. A huge thank you is owed to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, along with the many other agencies and organizations who had the vision to bring a majestic wild animal to such a majestic wild landscape. And a big thank you to the Tongass National Forest for allowing us to film this incredible adventure and share it with you.